We hear God's word in the Acts of the Apostles. But the word of God continued to advance and gain adherence. Then after completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem and brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaen, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogue of the Jews, and they had John also to assist them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. You believe, Thomas, because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus cried aloud, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me should not remain in darkness. I do not judge anyone who hears my words and does not keep them, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my word has a judge. On the last day the word that I have spoken will serve as judge, for I have not spoken on my own. But the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak, just as the Father has told me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Just this morning finished having a meeting with my colleagues from across the deanery the clergy of the parishes in the city of Portsmouth. And it's something we've been doing regularly now during lockdown, and it's become a time where we can share with each other what's happening in our own communities, our own questions, our reflections, our worries, sometimes our tiredness, sometimes the stories that make us laugh, sometimes the things that have cheered us on our way talking about the things that we're planning to do, the things that we hope we'll do in the days that lie ahead, and also beginning to talk about how things might happen in the weeks and the months that lie ahead, and some of the implications for us. In all those conversations, in the great variety of things that are shared and expressed, the thing that I find most heartening is that sense of we're in this together, that we are, all of us, seeking to discover what it is that it means to be faithful to Christ in the situation that we now face. One of my colleagues talks about how do we sing the Lord's song in a strange land. How do we hear Christ's voice speaking to us in this current time? And that's true not just for the clergy, but for all of us as the people of God. How do we share our hopes and our joys, our sorrows, our fears, our weariness, at the time that we most need to share it? How can we share now with each other our hopes and our prayers? And how then do we hear God? How do we hear his voice speaking back to us? Because the not being alone isn't just about being with the colleagues. It's also recognising that in that great diversity and variety that we are, God is present with each of us, just as he's present with each of us who share in this celebration. How do we find that presence? How do we respond to that call? And how do we look to the future with hope 
as the people of God. Paul, Saul, as we heard in the Acts of the Apostles reading today, sets out on a great journey with Barnabas and John, called Mark. We too are on a great journey, and we don't travel alone. We travel with each other. Wherever we are, we are together, exploring what it means to be God's people. And I hope that in the days that lie ahead, you will continue to explore with us what it means to be faithful to Christ, what it means to listen for his voice, and how best we can show his love and his word to the world around us. Doing it not alone, but together, and doing it together with him, who is present with each and every one of us, wherever we are, whatever we do.